Okay, today we're continuing with our medication series and we're looking at intermediate acting insulins. As with all our videos in our medication series, this is not advice about whether or not you should take these medications. It is purely to show you how they work so you have a better understanding about how your diabetes is being treated. Okay, so with that out the way, let's jump in and look at intermediate acting insulins. What are intermediate acting insulins? Historically, intermediate acting insulins were used as your basal or background insulin before long acting insulins were invented. But after technology has moved on and long acting insulins have come to market and have been a viable option for patients to use, intermediate acting insulins have found their own place among the treatment of type 2 diabetes, helping with enteral nutrition, helping treat steroid related glucose spikes, amongst a few other uses. Intermediate acting insulins are just that. They act for an intermediate amount of time. So usually that's anywhere between 12 to 16 hours. So you do not get a full 24 hour insulin coverage if you're using an intermediate acting insulin. This is why people that used to take this with type one diabetes would need to take it twice a day as shown by the green here on our graph. However, if you're not using it in type one diabetes where you must have 24 hour insulin coverage to prevent problems, then you may see these taken once a day as well, potentially once a day in the morning or once a day in the evening to help prevent glucose rises seen throughout the day or glucose rises seen overnight, particularly rises in the morning that are related to hormones. As you can see from our graph, we can compare intermediate acting insulin's uh, profile compared to long acting insulins. So long acting insulins, which we've done a video on, which is available on the blog as well, you can see they are injected and then they're quite a steady release throughout the day and you generally get around 24 hour insulin coverage. So you don't get much of a peak on the profile. So when we're talking about profiles and peaks, that's what we're talking about. How is the insulin distributed after its injection? Whereas intermediate acting insulins, because they last for a shorter duration per unit, you end up with squeezing the amount that is seen at any given time. So you tend to get more of a peak when you initially administer this, and then the insulin tends to drop off over time. So just to highlight that example, if I was to give say 20 units of long acting insulin, that 20 units is distributed over 24 hours. So you get less of a peak because it's got longer to distribute that 20 units out. Whereas 20 units of intermediate acting insulin, obviously if it's only operating for 12 hours in the body, then that 20 units is, has to be squeezed in into half the time compared to the long acting insulin, which is why we get these insulin peaks. So comparing them then, we can see that intermediate acting insulins do have this slight peak compared to the long actings and they also run out much quicker. What are the benefits of intermediate acting insulins? So some of the key benefits of intermediate acting insulins is they actually give us a lot of flexibility with things we want to do. So for example, if you're someone that has high glucose levels during the day due to food related glucose rises, but then you're prone to hypos overnight because you're not eating, then if you took a once daily long acting insulin, even though it's a flatter profile, sometimes it's increased to compensate for the food, but then what you'll find is you're susceptible to low blood sugars overnight because obviously there's no food propping you up anymore. Whereas an intermediate acting insulin, we can give an increased dose in the morning to compensate for that. And then we can give you a smaller dose at night um, because there's no food going in. So it's quite flexible in terms of what we can do with it with that twice a day injection regimen. The other good thing about intermediate acting insulins is they're kind of a step down from mixed insulins. Now we've done a video on mixed insulins as well, but just as a summary, that's two insulins put together. So you have intermediate acting insulins mixed with rapid insulins, which are there to help deal with food. Now these can really put you at uh, risk of hypoglycemia if you don't know what you're doing with them. Whereas intermediate acting insulins do not have that rapid element. So you're, mess, you're less likely to hypo by taking an intermediate acting insulin. One of the other key benefits of intermediate acting insulins is their profile tends to match quite nicely with the glucose rises seen from enteral nutrition and also steroid related hypoglycemia. So these tend to be our insulin of choice when we're dealing with glucose rises related to those, um, those medical therapies. What are the negatives of intermediate acting insulins? Well, one of the key negatives is that it only gives you 12 hours of insulin coverage. So that's one of its strengths, but it's also one of its negatives. Because if you have type one diabetes and you're taking this, 
it doesn't give you much margin of error with regards to missing doses. In fact, if you miss a dose with type 1 diabetes, you can be in quite a lot of trouble quite quickly as you see glucose, rises, uh, glucose levels start to rise and ketones might start to form. Another downside, but this is the same with all insulins, you are at risk of hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugars, when you're taking these medications. One of the other downsides, depending on what you're using it for, can be that it does last 12 hours. Now this can be quite flexible for some people, but if you're taking it, say, for enteral nutrition, particularly in hospital, you take the insulin as the feed goes on, so then you're starting to get a steady drip of carbohydrate and glucose into your system, but then for whatever reason, the feed stopped, of course, then we can't just switch off the insulin, so it can lead you, leave you prone to low blood sugars. Also, sometimes these insulins will be given to help compensate for the rises seen during the day, for example. As I said, you can be flexible. You can give two different doses at different times of the day to help compensate for perhaps rises seen by food, and then give a reduced dose at night as you go to sleep and don't have anything else affecting your blood sugar levels. But then if you change your diet, or for whatever reason on that day you have slightly different meals to what you're used to, then actually that insulin is still working for 12 hours and then again it can put you at risk of hypoglycemia. We obviously have the two comparisons here. We have long acting and we have intermediate acting insulin. You'll have to excuse the handwriting, art was never my strong point. But let's just put this into perspective compared to a mixed insulin. So mixed insulins give you a much stronger peak because they have that rapid acting element. But then they also have that intermediate acting part. So as you can see, the stronger the peak, the more likely you are to hypo. And also, if you have bigger peaks with longer duration, one, it could be great for helping to lower high glucose levels if you're prone to high glucose levels. But if you're a bit up and down with your levels, then bigger peaks with longer durations can put you at risk of hypos. So intermediate acting insulins are one step down from those mixed insulins, but actually one step up from the long acting. But of course, the long acting doesn't always give you enough coverage to deal with the spikes seen by food. So intermediate acting insulins can be a nice halfway house between the two. And that's it guys, that's everything you need to know about intermediate acting insulins. I hope you found it useful. Remember, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe and like button. If you wanna know when I publish more videos, hit the bell and it will tell you when I've published. If you're watching on the blog, I hope you're finding it useful. I'll stop there and I will see you at the next video.